is effective and efficient training for sequential recommendations using recency sampling. Uh, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, I'm Craig McDonald. Uh, so I've two, we've got two papers to present. Um, the, these are both first authored by Alexander Sasha Petrov. Um, his visa did not arrive, um, so instead you have me. Um, so this, uh, the first paper is about efficient and effective training for sequential recommendation. So um, yes, this is, this is a sequential recommendation session. Clearly, we're in this task of trying to take a number of interactions that you've seen the user make with items and, for, and predict what the, next, the user's next interaction will be. As, as you've seen in the previous talks, many of the state-of-the-art uh, sequence recommendation models are based on deep learning. Um, these models tend to borrow ideas from other domains. So we have uh, from computer vision, we've, we've received convolutional neural networks and used them in models such as NextITNet and Kaiser. Um, from natural language processing, we've had RNNs, which are used in GRU for REC, and more recently in transformer, transformers, again from natural language processing, we've got models like SASREC and BERT for REC. Uh, which are arguably some, one of the, the state of the art. However, um, these models are, are these transformer-based models are effective, but they can also be challenging uh, or inefficient to train. So, on on this graph, uh, we've shown the training time for a number of these models, uh, as well as their uh, effectiveness in terms of NDCG. So, I can I can clearly get a popularity model instantly. I can train BPR very very quickly. Um, SAS rec, um, I might take, I might need an hour or so, um, but to get a fully converged BERT for rec model, um, I would need 16 hours. Um, in fact, we, I'll talk a bit more about that BERT for rec data point in, in the second presentation. But um, what we wanted to seek was whether we could make a model that was both efficient to train and effective, okay? So we, in particular, looking at these transformer models, SASREC and BERT for REC, we looked at their training objectives. How were, how were they trained based on, 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 on training sequences? So there are mainly two classes of training objectives for sequential recommendation models. So if I have a training sequence A, B, C, D, seek in a sequence continuation, um, I'm going to take, for instance, D as being my, my, my target item. So given, if we see A, B, and C, I'm training the model that it should be able to predict correctly the item D, okay? Um, sequence continuation is good. It's closely related to our end goal of sequence recommendation, right? We're giving, uh, we've seen the user interact with a number of items. We're trying to predict what the last item they're going to interact with. It results in models that are fast to converge. However, it doesn't use the training data efficiently. And by that, I mean given one sequence, you're only showing that to the model once. We have a single positive, the D. On the other hand, if I'm to use uh, item masking, item masking is used in BERT for REC. It's clearly inspired by the training objectives that we train in natural language processing, the BERT model. Um, so in, in item masking, I take my training sequence A, B, C, D, and I hide out or mask out B and D, and I try and get the model to recover those, hid, those masked items, okay? So this is actually a more efficient use of the training data. For each training sequence, we're giving it multiple positives to try and recover. It gives us good effectiveness. I showed you that on the previous slide where BERT for REC was very effective. Okay? Um, but it is slow to converge, and it is only weak related to the end goal. Whether the model, sh hiding B from the model doesn't, isn't actually a useful, um, a, a useful thing to do. So to, to address this challenge that we'd set ourselves, we, we wanted to try to see if we could find a new training objective that combined both of the, that, that combined the desirable attributes from these existing training objectives, okay? These are desirable attributes, but in, in some way they're, they're in opposition. So our two de desirable attributes were that any item can be selected as a positive as per item masking. This makes an efficient use of the training sequences. 
but also that more recent interactions are used as positives more often, okay? This is what sequence continuation does. Um, so that makes it more realistic targets for learning, and hopefully our models will converge faster. So in, in this work, we have, we have proposed recency sampling of sequences, okay? We probabilistically select positives such that more recent items have increased um, chances of being selected. So if I take my original sequence A, B, C, D, I'm going to put on some sampling prior that is biased towards the later items. Um, so that means that if I select B and D as being my positive items that I'm trying to predict, and then the rest of the sequence uh, that, that, we, that we, we show to the model is A, C, and E, predict, trying to predict correctly B and D. Um, I, so B and D were my positives there, but I can also, it could also have been C and E, or D and E. But actually, by using this sampling prior, we can, we can have... Um, training examples that are more likely or less likely to be sampled from that existing sequence, okay? So A, B, C, D, E would be more likely to have been sampled because we're sampling more, we're giving more weight to items that are later on in the sequence. To define, oops, to define this prior, um, we came up with a recency importance function, okay, that, that, that assigns the weight of the item given its, its position in the sequence. Um, we used only in this paper an exponential um, uh, recency importance function. Uh, it's based on alpha, which is a hyperparameter, um, to the power of n, the sequence length, and, and i, the position in the sequence, okay? Um, so this means that uh, this function is designed such that items later in, the, later in the sequence are more likely to be sampled as positives. We can adjust that hyperparameter to place more or less emphasis on the later items. So I've introduced RSS. You're probably wondering, does it work? Um, so we conduct a number of experiments we use in comparing um, RSS with a sequence continuation um, training objective. We did this on a different model, uh, on different data sets, so MovieLens, Goala, Yelp, Booking.com, uh, building on the GRU for REC, Kaiser, and SAS REC model architectures, and using, uh, loss, using binary cross entropy and lambda rank as our uh, loss functions. And in all of these experiments, we limited the training time to one hour. We wanted to see what we could do with just one hour of training time. So on to the, the evaluation results. Um, so on, on the left-hand side, you'll see the different model architectures as well as the loss functions that, that, that we were varying. Um, and then showing you the results for one data set. So the first column is for sequence continuation, the second column for recency sampling. And you can see, on, you can see here immediately that we're, we have significantly improved results when using recency sampling across all of the model architectures, all of the loss functions. Um, and that is something that is repeated on Yelp. It's repeated on Goala with one exception. Um, but it's not repeated on Booking.com. Uh, we think Booking.com has, has some, um, it's about trips in cities, and there's a much higher degree of sequential dependence there. But certainly, significant improvements on MovieLens and Yelp and Goala. So how does this compare with the state-of-the-art models? So this was, the, this was the graph that I showed earlier, and I had a, I had a white circle over it. Well, um, unsurprisingly, you will see that um, SAS REC, when improved with our recency um, sequential sampling, uh, results in much more effective models, even more effective than a fully converged BERT for REC, um, while needing no more training time than the normal SAS REC implementation. Um, I, it does, of course, have the, it has this hyperparameter um, that affects uh, how often we're sampling 
um, later or earlier items in, in, sequ in the training sequences. Um, so this graph, in this graph, we investigate the importance of that parameter. Um, so you, there is a line for the different uh, lines for the different model architectures, and the dotted line is is the level of uh, B, the BPR matrix factorization baseline. So when when alpha is close to zero, the results match those that we had earlier for um, the sequence continuation task alone. Okay, when alpha approaches one, the target items are simply sampled from the sequences without any ordering preferences, you'll see that performance drops close to matrix factorization. Um, so, and, but there seems to be, across all models, a kind of sweet spot round about that, that 0 0.9. Okay, so um, on, to the, on to our conclusion. So I've introduced um, recency sampling of sequences. Um, I hope I've convinced you that it is an effective and efficient training objective for sequential recommendation. It allows us to train models that in a limited training time that result in effectiveness close to or beating those of, of the state of the art. Um, I've shown that it improves uh, performance across a number of data sets, model architectures, and training losses. Um, but it did not improve performance on the booking.com data set, which, had a, which we think has a strong sequential pattern that we weren't able to capture as well. Um, in terms of future work, um, we did not integrate recency sam sampling of sequences into bert for rec That's because bert for rec has positional embeddings to tell, um, to tell the model where the items are in the sequence. That makes it a bit more of a complicated uh, model to integrate. And as you can see, we're already able to, do, to be more effective than bert for rec um, in much less training time. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, Sasha has a repository f uh, for this implementation if you want to um, see any of our results or the code. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Um, the mic is, is there. Please go ahead. Um, in the meanwhile, there is a lot of questions here, so I think uh, we're not going to get to all of them. Uh, some people are asking about the machine configuration that you use for these experiments. Um, I couldn't tell you offhand, but it is definitely in the paper. Okay. Um, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, could I ask a question about the detail of the Sussrec results? Uh, because when we talk about the Vanina Sussrec, we talk about the Sussrec uh, trained with the binary cross entropy loss. That's what mentioned in the original paper. But uh, empirically, we find if we just simply change the loss to a um, cross entropy loss, the convergence can be much faster and the performance can be slightly improved. So I just want to know uh, if there are any comparison with a very simple modifi modification of the loss from BCE to CE uh, in this plot or in your experiments. Thanks. Um, so. Um, that's certainly a question I can take to Sasha. Um, we, uh, the experiments that we have were, were based on binary cross entropy, as you know. Um, SASREC is already quite fast to converge. I guess you, you, you're arguing that you could make it slightly faster again. Yeah. Um, but the, the, in, in all cases, we're able to markedly improve its performance by using the, the RSS. Yeah, I just want to know, because you have very nice plot about the uh, yeah, maybe the previous pages. Yeah, I just want to know what is the position for a um, cross entropy loss based. Sustract. Okay, so, so yeah. the, the, the cross entropy experiments aren't in the paper because I, I don't think that was part of the original uh, SASREC implement. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, because paper. the first rack is trained for the, uh, with the cross entropy loss. So I think that could be a more fair comparison if we have the results yeah, in the same setting. Okay. Yeah, J just a question. Thanks. Thank you. Another question? Yeah, uh, it was really interesting talk and a lot of, I think, practical implications. And my question is, uh, when looking at individual sequences, uh, then I think uh, sequence length uh, could be also matters, uh, I mean, affected by the different uh, the sampling ratios. I mean, like, so did you do some analysis on, like, different sequence lengths whether they have a uh, 
more uh, impacted by this new method or not? So. Um, I don't believe so, but that's a great idea for an extension. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, last question, please. Uh, hi, thank you for the talk. Um, I just wanted some clarification about the way in, the, in which uh, each sequence was used, especially in the, the vanilla SSREC. Uh, from what I understand, the training consisted in uh, like, uh, using the, the last element of the sequence as a positive example. W w was it like this? So, um, so on this graph, I'm showing SASREC vanilla, which is the original implementation. Yeah. Um, so while on this, we're showing you, s uh, for instance, SASREC using binary cross entropy and the normal and, and our implementation of the sequence continuation. So, so there were results in the paper separately stated for SASREC vanilla, which was the original implementation versus SASREC with sequence continuation. Okay. Um, so, so yeah. Because I was wondering, like, one of the ways of uh, training at SASREC would be to consider for each sequence of length L, like L minus one small sequences. Yeah, yeah. So, so, parallel, so. I, I, what I've hidden, what, there's clearly we had 12 minutes here. Um, there's more discussion on windows on um, sequence continuation with sliding windows in the paper, including some results, I think. Okay, so it's in the paper? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, well, let's thank. Craig again. Um, and um, this is for pulling up so many questions. We had so many questions also online. I'm sorry we didn't get to answer all of them. Um, and, and Craig stays with us um, to the next talk, which is a systematic review of uh, replicability study of BERT for, of BERT for REC for sequential recommendations. So 